left foot on brakes, mm -hmm. full throttle, and go. Hey everybody, it's Charlie from Daily Motor. We've got a fun experience today. We are out at the Porsche Experience Center here in Los Angeles. And as you can see around me, there are a lot of Porsches to drive. We are out on this trip here with Tedward, as well as Chris and Chris inside, Chris Squared. And we will be out doing a Turbo S and Taycan Turbo experience. They've got multiple modules out here at the Porsche Experience Center that you can uh, do all sorts of things from intense off-roading. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see it on the camera, but way off that way Is a Cayenne doing Cayenne things doing off-roading. We did that a little bit earlier I'll throw the link to Chris's video in the description so you can check that out Unfortunately, we're not all able to film that one, but he had a good time in the Cayenne But then we're gonna head out and try some of those. We've got high-speed stuff We've got handling things some low friction surfaces so we're gonna have a lot of fun. I'm going to cut to right in the car. I'm sure we're gonna be kind of just hitting it right away, talking at you a little bit as we go. But we're excited to see what Porsche Experience Center LA has to offer. Welcome to Taycan Turbo. Yeah. Now, have you driven the Taycan yet at all? Only the base, rear wheel drive. Oh, okay. Yeah. Those are like really, really enjoyable, especially if you want to get tail like most of those <laughs> Yep. But of course, this is going to be a little bit different. This one's a Taycan Turbo. So let's pop on over to this side. All right, everyone, we are settling here into the Taycan. So of course, this is what we are going to get to play with for the first half. Great. Let me introduce you real quick. Everyone, this is Sarah here Hi, everybody. at PECLA. And we're going to go out and I'm sure she's going to show us some of the capabilities of the Taycan Turbo. And we get the we get the comfortable seat this time. Air conditioning's on, mm -hmm. and we're gonna we're gonna chill and see what this thing can do. So this exercise is a low friction circle. It's a great place to demonstrate the different causes of loss of traction. Great place to experience what is oversteer, what's understeer, what what are those what are those things even mean, or. Maybe we already know what that means, and maybe we want to go drifting. Maybe we want to get sideways a little bit. Some of us have also never driven an electric car, or they're in all-wheel drive, and are thinking, I don't know if you can drift an all-wheel drive car that's electric. Well, maybe we can kind of do that right now. It's going Sport Plus. We hear the noise coming on a little bit. And you can get this car sideways. <laughs> and pointed. <laughs> yeah, that's really cool. For those of you who didn't catch it, over 100 miles per hour there on the Speedo, but uh, obviously not moving that here. No. And with those electric motors, I mean, these things can, can come up to speed so quickly that we're spinning right down to the asphalt there, or, well, whatever this material is underneath. Yeah, yes. So this concrete. polished concrete, there's okay. a level of polish on it as well as some water that can help us break loose. Okay. And this exercise is used to demonstrate to folks that, yes, it's a low traction or low traction type of condition, but the principles demonstrated on this will apply in any scenario. Just the wetness just lowers the threshold at mm. which things happen. Basically. Okay. I like to talk about how we can break traction by hitting the gas too much. That's called understeer. You give it too much gas and your front tires wash out. And I teach people how to fix that. Other things too, maybe give it too much throttle and oh my God, we're spinning out, right? <laughs> That's something that can happen as well. But anyway, Charlie, I think you're ready to try this out. Great. So hop on out. We're gonna join this racing yellow 911. They're gonna go to the other side and what we want to do is stay 180 degrees away from them. Okay. Now, if they spin out, we come to a stop, let them get reset. If we spin out, then they're supposed to stop and let us kind of reorient ourselves. Okay. So, Charlie, a couple things. Okay. Keep your eyes locked on that inner ring that you see on the left. 
Okay. That will also help us to stay on this exercise. The eyes are an interesting thing. If we look off to the dry stuff, we'll end up driving off onto the dry stuff. So look right on here. Okay. There we go. <laughs> good fun, right? <laughs> yeah. Lots of good fun. Yeah, that's great. So, so are we in sport now, PSM Sport, or off? Uh, we've gone to PSM off. Okay, all right, great. initially no throttle okay you break loose you break traction then you have to recover and the state that you want to achieve before you start to return a throttle is that you stop the momentum of spinning out oh, okay then you can get onto the throttle and with this all-wheel drive now that's the understeer bit yep we get that understeer and that vibration the car doesn't want to respond like car the the front tires are not wanting to steer anymore so you just unwind a little bit slow down reduce your speed and that will restore grip to the front tires nice and then here is when we would give it some juice to mm -hmm. see if we could keep on going the challenge though of course is how long can i keep it that way right <laughs> with all-wheel drive you want to point towards the inner circle okay so you want to point the nose of this car, mm -hmm. or point the steering where you want this to face. Ah. Really, you won't be counter steering the whole time as if you were in a real wheel drive car. I see. So it's a little all right. And that's where I'm curious as to what cars you've driven mostly. It's <laughs> trying to do this with power to all four wheels. It's a little different. Yeah, you're right. Power now. Point slightly straight. Point left. Yep. There you go. There it is. So I gotta get a little more steering angle before applying throttle. Mm -hmm. So squeeze and release. Point right. Power. Point left. Point left. Power. 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 There it is. Point more left. Yeah. Okay. I see. There I see what is. you mean now more about <laughs> having to keep the front end. Yes. All right. All right. And it's it's very counterintuitive. To yeah. Drive, so mostly drive rear wheel drive. <laughs> so a little more power you think probably would have saved that getting it more into the track actually less okay let the amount of power will actually control how far we are in between these lanes okay big power will bring us out less power will bring you closer in all right look at that already getting it <laughs> nice that's fun Very that's nice. good that's Too much power. Too much power. Still hold it. Still hold it. A little less. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So the key is, if you get too close to the inner ring, mm -hmm. give it more power. But you have because it's going to come out. Yeah. Ah. If you get too far out, breathe the throttle. Okay. Now, I don't mean come off completely. Yeah. But you breathe. Use a little less. And this is about, yes, we're drifting, but this is about using throttle and understanding that throttle can control your position on a course, not necessarily your steering wheel. Okay. There. Now, right? Juice it. Point a little left. A little more, a little more. We're working We're going the wheel <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, there could probably be a little more finesse mm -hmm. in the wheel. So the, the great thing is you've got the idea there. Yep. With the, what we can do with more time sure. is learn to also steer less and work less. And then it can get to the point where you're driving with your pinky up and <laughs> keeping it very, very straight. Driving with no hands. <laughs> can we do one more before we dip? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. So a, a, I was gonna say a little less power, and yes. that would have would have come in. Mm -hmm. One more than we'll yeah, lose. yeah. <laughs> sorry, sorry, just one more. Right. <laughs> Give me your feedback on how that went. That was a lot of fun. It was great instruction. That was kind of it's 
it is, does require a little bit of both thinking and then also just kind of relaxing and just doing what feels right. Yes. But the instruction for, for feeding power in and out, I mean, it, it did require me to stop, think a bit, and then go ahead and do it and mm -hmm. just try to feel it out. So that was, that was fun. Oh, nice job. Thank you. Nice job. So let's switch seats. Let's okay. see where our adventure is going to take us now. All right. Okay. So on the circuit, mm -hmm. I just want you to enjoy the car as it's intended to be. Okay. And you'll notice a lot of markers on here. There are some orange cones mm -hmm. to indicate braking zones. Okay. And there are blue cones that, um, if we're not familiar with them, they're referred to as corner apexes. They're just really the center of the corner. Certainly. See, as I drive through here right now, it's just a nice, pleasant cruise. And I'm trying to be as smooth as I can with my inputs. Okay. So I'm braking, and I'm trying to make that transition very smooth. In performance driving, uh, we learn smooth is fast great way to set up the foundation for what we're doing today. You'll notice that this particular blue cone, it's the only one that's not an apex, but we still get right up close to it. And that helps us set up for the one that's on the right side. In this particular section, I'm driving nice and straight, not making unnecessary corners out of it. And here we're braking, not wide, but if I can, I look out my right window. That's how far ahead I want to look for this next apex over the blue cone, then we're rolling that power open, we'll touch the rumble strips on either side, and make sure we get all the brakes done before we get to the peak. Okay. I'll tell you why in a moment. Now we're on the far right, but I'm looking only at my blue cone at the bottom left, and we're rolling that power open, being nice and steady through this, very minimal steering. Mm -hmm. Oh, great. Aiming for the right, tracking out left. Now, upgrade yourself to Sport Plus now. Let's we'll slow down for a second. Give me another thumbs up when you're ready. Okay. So, oh, there's that shift. I that lovely noise. Sounds like a spaceship in there now. And you got a sensation of speed audibly. Increase that pace, not more. As long as we're keeping it nice and smooth. Now, I'm front loading my tires, loading up the front so I can grip as I turn into the corner. We're going to roll that power open, crush the brakes on the left, light throttle as I aim to the right, get closer to me. What do I want to get a little closer to that one? That's the fun part here. As we start to get a little bit more exciting on that pace, it's important to still keep our marks, keeping our marks. Okay, a little jumpiness in the throttle there.
It's heavy, but it is fun. Certainly no 911. This is more of a Panamera sort of feel. What we're going to do is experience launch control with this car. Okay. It's going to be a blast. And this is where I always like to tell people, please put your head against the head. <laughs> it's a really good idea. Now we're going to do this in two stages. Mm -hmm. First stage is we're going to do a preview at low speed. Okay. And then once we're done with that preview, we'll turn around and we'll go to the actual area where we're going to do the launch. At the end of this exercise, we have a one-to-one -one scale replica of the carousel from the Nurburgring. So we're gonna drop right into that thing. Cool. Here we go. So eyeball the billboard for me, head against mm -hmm. the headrest, left foot hard brakes. Okay. Full throttle now. And go. <laughs> Usually this is a good time to think of a Top Gun song. <laughs> Eyes up and brakes. <laughs> now keep on braking. We want to go in at about 35 to 40. All okay. four tires into the bank. You are good. Roll onto that power. And notice the centrifugal force keeping us glued in. Sweet. Yeah, that's a lot of fun. <laughs> uh, yeah, that is awesome. And one of those things that just doesn't get old. No, it does not. No. Now, have you hit up and experienced one of these yet? I have. We were we were lucky enough to, to get one of these a while ago, and yeah, I mean, they're absolutely incredible. I and mean, we've, we've been fortunate enough to drive a lot of cool things, and this nice. is still the quickest Fit gas car. ever. Yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah, and then the, between the noises, the power, the, the it's yeah, it's incredible. So yeah, I'm about it. Good. This is going to simulate sudden loss of traction, okay. sudden oversteer. Mm -hmm. It's a very very cool mechanism that will actually shimmy, almost like a rug being pulled and getting pulled out from underneath you, and you're going to be suddenly sliding. <laughs> never done it before this is usually where I need to focus on the fact that recovery doesn't entail jamming on the brakes immediately sure or the gas that it is a movement that has to do with where you're looking and using the steering wheel in order to recover so I'm gonna go in okay I'm gonna simply demonstrate recovery mm -hmm. then I'm gonna demonstrate the process for what we do with failed recovery okay so I'm going in Doo -doo -doo. I'm gonna come off the gas before I get there Okay. If we don't catch it. You got it. The other thing too is right here over the floor, mm -hmm. there is a circle. We just want to drive over that. Okay. That will reset the exercise uh, for those behind us. Nice. And then Charlie, I think we're familiar with a stop sign. Yes. Please stop. You got it. Now this exercise is very much about <clears throat> vision and instinct. Okay. We'll drill in on the technique a little bit later, but let's see what happens based on pure instinct alone. Okay. Good stuff. Good stuff. So 
So not stopping here, just yeah. moving right on. Yes. Yep. No, there's no one else, so yep. you don't have to end the run. You never have to worry about Porsche brakes fading. They are incredible. And we're on the ceramic composites in this car. Yeah. Assuming pretty close. Probably less than half a foot. Okay. <laughs> and also, really, you can go as fast as you're comfortable as long as you're maintaining smoothness and not hitting cones. Okay. Just really. Picture it like you've got an open cup of coffee or shall I say, <laughs> open cup of water in the car and you don't want to spill it with inputs. paper and to hear it from people but to come out to something like this and experience it even if you own one even if you have one and and to have someone who knows what they're doing like Sarah here and to come uh, show you really how you can exploit these cars pretty darn cool do we need to do a whole cool down uh, do an actual cool down okay like we that was half <laughs> but yes, once we go home, home, then, it, then, then it's Then it'll be like, wah, wah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Awesome. Well, thank you to Sarah for giving us that awesome instruction, showing us around the facility. And thank you to PEC LA for bringing us out here. I'll be sure to check out uh, the winding road coverage. Chris Brower was out there in that car. We had Tom 
out for Tedward and Chris Amos, of course, doing for the Topher. We'll link all those below. This was a lot of fun. If you're in the area, I highly, highly recommend. And if you're in the Atlanta area, PACL uh, Atlanta. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, highly recommend. If Porsche fans or not, come out and experience, become a better driver, have a lot of fun doing it. We'll see you on the next one. I'm Charlie with Daily Motor, and as always, drive on. Thank mm -hmm. you.